Today is all about stairs. I'm not a stair guy. I haven't built tons and tons of stairs, but I do know what's going on and I have seen plenty of stairs built and I've installed several myself. Um, stairs can get rather complicated in some situations and a lot of guys basically that's all they do is stairs and they're pretty doggone good at it. So um, in my particular instance I'm lucky because I don't have any head height, I don't have any particular length of run, all I have is, is a rise to deal with. So. Um, these stairs shouldn't be too complicated, and I think we'll get it knocked out. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dirdorf, and this is Detroit DIY. So let's take a look at what we got going on. My stairs are going to start right here, and I'm going to um, use what is referred to as a flush mount to start my first step, which means my first step will protrude from here then down, and rather than a standard a standard would be down then out so I would have to install another board down here if I did it that way and the reason I've selected the flush mount rather than the standard is because of the way I've designed my railing so the flush mount is just going to work better for my railing system so I've installed a string right here at approximately 35 degree angle um, which is a a decent angle for stairs. I just kind of want to get an idea of where they're going to land. So I have to be careful here because I want to fill this with dirt up to the top or really close to the top of that cement pier. And I don't want my stairs to be down the hill and, and create a steep slope up to the steps. So I have to be a little bit careful what I'm going to do there. I will be using 2x12 material for my stair stringers, um, which is right there in that nice little pile. And I will be, I want to use, I don't know that I will be, but I want to use an 11 and a half inch tread and a 7 and a half inch rise. So maybe some adjustments to take place there, 11 and a quarter inch tread, something like that. Um, not sure. But we're going to get it laid out and uh, see what we got. So to lay out our rises and our treads, we're going to use a carpenter square. And what I like to do is maybe a little bit different than what other people like to do, but I find it to be pretty easy. So let's show you what I'm going to do. What I've done is I've laid my square out on here and I've got it at 11 inches here and seven and a half inches here and I drew my line and then I cut the wood out to the outside of the line so now I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to screw it to a nice straight piece of two by four down the center so that it looks like this that is the template for my steps now, like I say, I have no headroom, I have no restrictions in what I can do. So I've pretty much just determined the length of the tread and the rise. And I'm going to just use that. Now I did calculate that I'm going to need approximately 13 steps, maybe 12. I might have to adjust a little bit to get the height that I want. So I've, I've already got it drawn out on my stringer and basically how we do this is we you just take the board and you set it on there like this so that the one edge lines up with the other you draw your lines and then you move it to the next one lining it up where it starts at the very beginning and away you go and you just keep moving it along it makes the layout much easier um, it keeps you nice and straight there's no um, square clamps slipping moving you know you 
There's multiple ways to do this. I find this is the easiest and what I like the best and it works really good for me. So I need to figure out exactly where these stairs are gonna land before I cut that stringer just to make sure that my grade is okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this piece from my cutout right here. This is the length of my tread and this is the angle that will be butted against the deck. So I'm basically gonna take this and screw it on right here at the height that it needs to be so I can run my string along this edge. So I'll get it screwed on there and then I'll show you what we got going on. I've got this piece screwed on and I've got my string run. I have two nails up there, one for the string and one for the tape measure. And I've pulled it down to this stake. So if I measure my stringer that I have laid out to the edge of the 13th step, I'm 159 inches, and to the edge of the 12th step, I am 145 and 3 quarters. So we're going to take this tape measure, hook it on that nail up there, and see where that lands us. So for those of you that didn't know, there's a little slot in the end of the tape measure right there in the middle. That is for hooking it on a nail. All three of those are for nail hooking. So I have a nail sticking out right there that we are going to hook this tape measure on. Just like that. And we're going to pull it down. So right here is 159 inches. So that would be the top of my step right there meaning that the bottom of the step would be here. So if we stand back a little bit, hopefully we can see that line. There we can. That is really not the grade that I want. I want those stairs to land a little bit higher than that. So I've got a measurement from 12 steps just a second ago at 145 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to see where that lands here. So at 145 and 3 quarters, we would be there, which is a little bit higher than I wanted to be. So, and of course, that'll be the top of the step, not the bottom. The bottom would be down further. So actually, that might not be bad. I'm going to uh, um, go ahead, I'm going to cut that stringer, we'll get into that in a second. I am going to cut the 13 steps because I can always cut one off. This is the bottom of the stringer. So I started my first step right here. This will not be used, it will be cut off. So the cut off is right here. And then that leaves me to my 13 steps. But then it's very important that we compensate for the thickness of the first board going on top. So this first step will be cut down to five inches. Then when we put our two by material on top of here, our step will then be seven and a half inches and it will reduce this one, but then our two by is gonna make it up. And the same thing then the rest of the way up, your steps will all be seven and a half inches. So it's very important that you cut your first step shorter to the bottom where it's going to land on your landing so that you wind up with the same step height all the way through. So let's get one of these cut out. So when you're cutting these out, it's very important that you stay to the inside of the line, not the outside. 
and you need to do that all the way. Now we're going to stop cutting right here and then we will use the sawzall to finish cutting that out. And that was gonna happen huh so anyway there we go I got it all cut out um, what I want to do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the top and the bottom angles and not cut any more stringers out of it at this point in time just so I can kind of stand it up there get it laid out and see where the landing is gonna be because I need to dig a hole down there and get some cement in it um, and while that cements drying I'll have plenty of time to cut all of these stringers out it's just depending on whether I'm cutting out 12 or 13. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these, the top angle and the bottom angle and get that stringer set up there and get a look at what it's going to be. Yeah, I've got the stringer set up there, one screw holding it in. Um, we're looking pretty good. And this is the 13 step configuration. And as you can see, it's a little bit low, not really where the, I want the grade to be. Um, would be a, my wood would be buried in the dirt to get my grade up to here so not really where I want to be however if I go 12 steps which is here and I cut it off at the 5 inches I'm going to be almost perfectly level with the top of this so we're going to go 12 steps so I'm going to get this cut off to 12 steps put it back up here then I can locate exactly where my cement landing needs to be, get it dug out, get it formed, and get it poured. Okay, I've got the stringer in place, and I've marked out my footing for my landing, and I've got a little bit of it dug out. I'm going to show you what we got going on here. All right, I've put me a little mock step up there, and I've got my stringer adjusted to it. There is a little gap off the ledger, but that's okay because the stringer hanger is pretty much going to take that up and it doesn't matter if I have to slide it in just a little bit. So we are nice and level on our step, which is good. And I have, just for right now, toe-nailed a 4x4 post onto here because this is where the stringer is going to be. So this post will not stay a different one will be in its place and the railing will be on top of it so we've got everything set up with the bottom I just pulled me a string across the face of the duck post to get me a nice straight line to start working this in so I am going to finish digging this out I'm going to leave that stringer in place temporarily because I'm going to use it to help me set this form up, um, level it, and get everything else squared up on the form itself. So I'm going to keep digging here, and we will have a look at this when it's all formed up. I've got the stair stringer back down. I've got my stoop all formed up, and I am going to get this thing full of cement. 
We had a cold front move through last night, brought us a little bit of rain. It was good, we needed it. But I got everything done yesterday. 21 bags of cement to fill up that footing for the stairs. I'll show you what we got. I'm gonna get the form boards off in a minute and I'm gonna cut my other two stringers. I've got this stringer all cut out last night after I finished filling the slab and I'm just gonna use that as my template to lay across these others and uh, get them cut out. I need two more. And then this is ready to go. Get the forms off of it. Still a little green but it will support the stringers for now. Probably one of the ugliest forms I've ever built, but I did it with the wood that I had, so it worked. Um, I'm going to get this form board peeled off. I'm going to move a little bit of dirt around and uh, get these stringers on. Got the forms off. Got my dirt graded out. Now I need to get some railings installed before I can put this first stringer up. And I need to mark one of them for the angle of the railing to go down the stairs. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. This is my riser, and this is my tread. So the riser and this is the angle that I need. So what I'm going to do is just lay my post on here, and I'm going to line it up with this riser. Get it lined up real good. Just like that. And then underneath here, I'm going to scribe it. So that is the angle that I need for my stair railing. And I will make a template of this so that I don't have to do this every time. But I just want to get this one cut and installed. I'm laying out my stringers here off of the first stringer. And I'm going to show you why you want to lay all your stringers off of the first one that you cut. And as you can see right here, this lumber is dimensionally different than the one that I originally cut the stringer from. So if I was to use the pattern that I used to cut this one, when I put these stringers up, this one would be larger than the other one and cause me an issue with alignment. And almost all the way down, it is consistently larger than the other, than the other 2 by 12 so it gets a little decent right here, but not really. It is still larger. So that is why you want to cut all of your stringers off of the first stringer that you cut. Otherwise, you may run into something like this, where and then one stringer will actually be larger than the other one, and you'll notice that either your board's going to be um, sitting on a crest in the middle, or it just won't be good. So always cut your stringers off of your first stringer got all my stringers cut and I'm getting ready to install the stringers and I'm going to be using the adjustable stringer hangers and I'm going to show you what we got going on. I have one of the stringer hangers installed. This is exactly what we're using right here and you will need to use every nail hole to mount it to your ledger board. Then you will use each hole in the upper side and in the lower side but we'll only need to put one in the bottom now that'll get bent up around the bottom of the stringer once I get it in place so I'm gonna find somewhere I can position the camera where the Sun's not shining directly into it and get the stringer up
So I have two nails in it, and I'll go ahead and finish nailing it here in a minute. This is in my way a little bit. I got to take this off. So what I did was I temporarily installed a step so that I would have something to screw this up against to help hold it in place and know that it's in the right place. So what I did was I attached a couple of two by fours and I just screwed them into the duck. And it was off a little bit right here. So I used this to push it up where I wanted it and get it nice and flush. So I'm gonna get that out of the way in a minute here. So basically all we're gonna do now is take this stringer tie and we're gonna bend it under like this. I'll give it a little tap with the hammer right there and get it nice and then nail it. One screw, one nail in the bottom, all four nails here and we're good. I have two stringers up and I'm about ready to do the third one and I just wanted to touch base when I said one nail in the bottom is all you need and then someone may question why there's so many holes in the plate if only one nail is required in the bottom and the reason for that is, is so the plate is reversible so as you can see it's on opposite as over there so that these flanges are inside and hidden from view but only one nail is necessary in the bottom and then four nails here and four nails here so there's a total of nine nails holding the stringer in place and that is more than enough a joist hanger has eight nails securing it well, these only have six three down each side and then two toenail those have four and two toenails so eight hanger nails is plenty to hold that stair stringer in place. I have all three stringers installed. Everything's working out really nice, looking really good. I'm going to install a couple of stairs, probably three of them, just to kind of hold things in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll box in a little area right here and I will put a couple tap cons on each side down into the cement to hold the stringers in their place. So the cement's far too green to do that, and I am out of time. I need to get this stuff put away and head to the house. I just want to say, if you're doing stairs, you're going to be able to find a stair calculator online that you can put in your rise and your run, your total rise and run, um, how you want if you want a standard mount or a flush mount it gives you all kinds of options that's going to tell you how long your tread is going to be and how high your rise is going to be so it makes it pretty easy to use um, you can put in headroom all kinds of stuff it's just google stair calculator and and there it is it's, it's a handy tool um, in my case i didn't need it because i don't i didn't have a specified run um, just a rise so I, I was good like that we are out of time I need to get packed up and get headed back to the house I'd like to thank you for watching please hit that subscribe button guys hit the like button and if you really enjoyed yourself click on one of those two videos they're gonna pop up right there I'd like to give a special thanks to Tony Iaconelli and Brett Wimmer because none of this could happen without